Hi, I'm Emily Heron with Atlas Copco, and today I'm going to be taking you through the virtual station setting tab on our PowerFocus platform. I'm going to be using a PowerFocus 8 today, running 310.9 software to show you all the settings, but a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is going to apply to other products within the platform, including the PowerFocus 6000 and Tools Control. Any notable differences I'll touch on throughout the video. This is not going to apply to our IXB tool here running integrated controller. There's going to be separate content on that for you to check out. Now let's jump into the software. The virtual station tab is where the other settings and configurations of the controller come together to create a unique station so that each tool that's connected to the controller can be configured exactly how you need for the specific application that you'll be using it for. When you first open the tab, you're going to see that the software already has one virtual station created with the default name of virtual station one. The PowerFocus 8 can support up to 20 tools using virtual stations. So when you need to connect another tool to the controller, you're going to use the plus button in the top right corner of the screen. This will create another virtual station for you to configure and connect another tool. Here at the top, you can see you can change the name of the station. Some people use the process name, some the name of the tool. You can name it whatever you like using up to 32 characters. I'm gonna name it an example to show you how it orders itself alphabetically. Next, we see the licenses tab. Here is where we are going to assign the virtual station license type. With the flexibility offering of different license types, we can assign functionality for many different tool types all in the same controller. We also offer some additional licensed features for our controllers. Examples of this could be ILG embedded or an open protocol extension, and you would assign them here to the virtual station. This is gonna be a little bit different in the PF6 Flex because of the sync licenses that are associated with fixture tools, which also means that our next tab, the tool tab is gonna be different for Flex as well. This is where you're going to assign a tool to a virtual station. When you want to assign a tool, you're going to click choose tool and a list of all of the tools that are currently paired to the controller are going to show here. If it is already assigned to a virtual station, it's going to appear gray and available tools are going to show in black text. To help you find the correct tool in the list in case you have a lot here, it's going to give you some basic information such as max torque of the tool. Once a tool is paired to the virtual station, you're going to see a pop-up that tells you it's connected to the controller. If it's a battery tool, there's going to be a MAC address and serial number here. For cable tool, it just says cable tool. Underneath that, we have the configurations. We want to be sure we have the right configuration for the type of tool that we have assigned. If you click into the tool configuration, it will show a list of all of the tool configurations you have set up in the controller. You can filter by tool type at the top here to make it easier to find which one you want. Next in the list, we have one of our most important settings, the task. The task is telling the tool what to do when you press the trigger. If you click on the task tab, you will see three options, tightening program, batch sequence, and sources. Tightening program is gonna run one strategy over and over and over again. A batch sequence is a set or group of strategies, and sources allow you to select a tightening program or batch sequence depending on an input. This input can be a barcode scan, field bus, or open protocol, depending on how you set it. There are gonna be other videos about source selection for the PowerFocus platform that you can go and watch after this to get more information. Once you select what you want this tool to run, it's gonna show the name in the task tab here. Underneath that is manual mode or test tightening in the PF6 Flex. This is essentially a backup mode that can be triggered if the tool needs to perform some sort of work outside of its normal task. For example, if the tool needs to be calibrated over a lunch break or there's an issue with the MES system. Manual mode can assign a secondary task to run when manual mode is triggered. It can be triggered various ways and you can assign different entering and leaving signals to send when it is triggered. The setting is not widely used and can certainly and most often is left unconfigured. If you need more information about manual mode, please contact your local Atlas Copco representative. Next tab down, we're gonna find the protocols. If you have a customer specific protocol, it will also appear here but most people are gonna see just open protocol. The settings for open protocol are very simple, but very important. We use the server port, commonly just referred to as the port number, which defaults to 4545, but must be unique for each virtual station. This allows for communication in and out of the controller to be tied to the specific virtual station that they're coming from or going to. The port number is how the system knows which tool is which when using the single IP address of the controller. The PLC index is for use with the soft PLC. There's another video for more information on soft PLC. 
Then we see the communication timeout, which can be set between 15 and 60 seconds. And then we have the disconnect setting. The disconnect setting is how you want the tool to behave if it loses communication with open protocol. You can choose different options such as lock tool active high or always lock the tool depending on the behavior you need. The legacy counter represents a behavior that we would see used in the PF4000 that's gonna count all your tightenings in a sequence, otherwise known as job or batch, and it's outputting that number to secondary systems like an MES. You're only gonna use legacy counter if you need to mirror that behavior. The final two settings are to enable the use of mid 15 and mid 2500 if your application requires them. Along with soft PLC, there's other resources to explain these mids. Going back to the virtual station tab, next we have the accessories. Since we can have multiple tools and accessories paired to the same controller, we have to assign the accessories to the virtual station we wanna use them with. So here you can see we are going to pair the configuration and the connected accessory together by selecting one of each puzzle piece. This is going to assign the accessory to the virtual station. Once the accessory is assigned, it's gonna be grayed out with the virtual station name it is paired to, so you will know it's unavailable for other stations to use. You can use this garbage can icon to unassign the accessory, but now that the accessory is connected, you can actually click into this tab here for more information and diagnostics for the accessory. You can actually force signals if you have an IO assigned for testing. Next, we have the field bus tab. Field bus must be assigned in Toolstock 2. If there is no assigned field bus, you will see this no field bus is mapped and can ignore this tab. If you have a field bus configuration in Toolstock 2, then you can go to info and you can view the variables in monitor or force mode, similar to the way we just saw in the IO diagnostics. You do not need additional software to monitor the field bus inputs and outputs. There is no field bus option for tools control and the power focus cross country, so you will not find this tab on those products in the virtual station menu. Finally, we have the general virtual station settings. This is where you will assign any configurations that you have made for the virtual station in the configurations menu, such as disable loosening on OK. There's another video about all of the configurations in that menu that you can check out to learn more. That was quite a bit to cover, but as I mentioned, this is where all your settings come together to run your station, so it's probably the most important tab on the software. I hope what I shared today was helpful. If you have any more questions, please reach out to your local Atlas Copco representative, and thanks for watching.